Good morning, uh, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm uh, really honored to be here and uh, share my uh, experience and our future plans to, to, uh, toward the tea plantation precision management. But before I do that, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you, the organizers, and also UC Davis to invite us here and uh, give us a very warm uh, hospitality here. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, before I do my talk, I think uh, from the yesterday's um, presentation, I think all of you know that um, tea, uh, growing tea in California is just at the sta uh, starting stage. So probably you don't, actually you don't, probably don't write at, mo at this moment, probably you don't need this um, precision, uh, precision management for, uh, yet. But uh, I, I'm sure that in the future, once you have um, a lot of uh, tea plantation, then uh, UC Davis will receive a lot of phone calls and calling, say, how do I achieve a better, a higher yield or the better quality of my tea uh, leaves? So probably then at that time, um, <laughs> you will appreciate this, <laughs> the thing I'm talking about. But I think for the scientists, uh, we need to see the future and we need to work um, before that. So, so please um, uh, be patient with me. But before I go to my talk, <clears throat> I will deviate a little bit. Uh, in 2012, in, some, in 2012, uh, the Ministry of Education in Taiwan, they tried to seek um, some proposals to shorten the gap between the, the students and the, I mean, for students when they graduate, they, will immediate, they can go immediately to the industry to do the work. Uh, at that time, we make a proposal which says uh, we want to promote this uh, NCHU Wisdom T platform. This platform uh, is mainly focused on educating the students. We try to have them engage in the research and things, but most importantly, we like to uh, attract those young people to, for, uh, to let them become a tea lovers. So in the future, <laughs> then the, the tea industry will be more prospectus. In this program, <clears throat> we have about 27 courses now. And uh, it's open uh, to all the NCHU students. They can be the, either PhD students or master's students or the undergraduate students. And most of those courses is taught at late in the afternoon or even in the evening because most of the students, they have their own majors and they have the courses they have to take. So we, those are the selective courses. They can choose whatever they want and take those courses. Because um, these courses, we divided them into um, different parts. Uh, during the time when we uh, submit our proposal, the, M the Ministry of Education, they want to have some proposal, like they call it a sandwich um, cl class structure. I'm not sure uh, <laughs> what's that, but uh, the one we have here is uh, we have some uh, general courses. Sorry about this in Chinese. Those are in green color, this is like a m uh, more common courses. But uh, then we also have core courses and uh, more advanced courses then they were encapped by those uh, service learning courses and uh, internship training things. And uh, we divided our course into two main parts. Uh, those in, red color, uh, in blue color is uh, about plantation management and the tea making. And for in those in red colors will be related to the culture, creation, and the marketing. So the student, they can choose those courses depend, uh, based on what the, their I mean, interest and uh, take the courses. They did, uh, there's no requirement they have to take this before they can graduate. This is just like a supplemental course for them. And there's no degree program for that. But uh, if our students, they like to be certified, then we have uh, some certification systems. They, they have to pass the exam, then we will give them certificates. Then the, those uh, industry people, they will recognize those things. So they, they can help them uh, find their jobs. Here are some of the things you can see that we started from uh, having the student go to the field and actually planting the things, then making the teas, and uh, do some tea serv uh, serving ceremony. And also we have some angel funds for students. They can um, write some proposals and uh, we have uh, review uh, panels and we decided if they are good enough, then we will give them some seed money. Then they can um, <coughs> tr actually try to make them, uh, their thinking of become true. And also we have uh, service, uh, we 
help the farmers, local farmers, and th those are the, we, uh, if based on the direct translation from those uh, in China, that would be like a spotlight of uh, uh, tea farmers. So then they, we, we help them to become those kind of farmers. And also we welcome a lot of international students. So they use, so sometimes then they come to here to campus, then we'll give them a very short courses about the tea industry and tea making and the tea culture things. So those are the things um, probably um, if uh, uh, Jackie mentioned that uh, some UC Davis students will study abroad, then probably we can, uh, in the future, we can expand or enhance this, the contents for this um, international uh, work. Then uh, we will welcome your students here. <laughs> okay, then uh, I'll back to my talk. Okay. This is a uh, uh, tea plantation in a high mountain area. Looks very beautiful. This is. Um, uh, uh, some uh, benefits for doing the field work. You, you can enjoy the beautiful scenery outside. It's, it's difficult to see in the lab. But the, the tea plantation, it's beautiful, but uh, it also has some problems. The, the problem we, we're facing here is uh, there's overuse fertilizers and pesticides. In Taiwan, um, in a whole year, we probably can have uh, six cuts or six harvests for the teas. And usually the farmers, they will spread their fertilizers at three different times, and the, the amount of fertilizer they use, this is the recommended uh, amount of fertilizers. Uh, it, it's already quite high compared to the other crops, but uh, the farmers usually, they would put um, much, more, uh, much more than this. So we have a lot of this uh, over fertilization problems. And also, um, for each harvest, uh, after the harvest, then uh, the farmers tend to use uh, spray those uh, pesticides to prevent the diseases because uh, when you harvest, you have some wounds there, and uh, they try. To, uh, they are thinking that probably they, when they put the chemicals, then they can prevent the diseases. And also, up, um, other than the pest and disease control, there also they put uh, herbicides to control the wheat. So on average, there's about eight times per year. So I. <laughs> Uh, uh, just please uh, don't be afraid using Taiwan teas because uh, most of the teas, uh, <laughs> the, the farmers, they, we have some organic farmers and so they don't use those chemicals. But even those farmers, uh, they use chemicals, they follow the, the rules very strictly. So they won't harvest um, after that. And usually those products, they will be examined for the pest res uh, residue. So don't worry about that, it's, it's quite safe. But the problem is uh, when you over uh, overuse those fertilizers and uh, the pesticides, then um, it destroy, uh, endanger the, your environment. Uh, so here is one example. This is um, the, the, the beautiful garden I just show you is somewhere around here. Um, this is high in the mountains. And this, uh, this particular site, we have a reservoir here. And uh, they monitor the water quality in this uh, reservoir. Uh, this, Everything below this yellow line, that's uh, the oligographic. If it is above the red line, that's the eutrophic uh, eutroph conditions. So you can see in, in the upstream here, this quite often they exceed this uh, red line. That, that means the water quality is not good enough. But those probably due to this uh, overuse of fertilization. So to reduce this, then uh, things comes to the, the we call it the precision agriculture. I think this is the, the, future, the future of the agriculture. I think uh, in UC Davis, you also have uh, smart farming initiatives. They probably also work on this. Uh, this. This precision agriculture, they require, there's, we call it site-specific crop management. So use a lot of those modern technologies such like uh, remote sensing, GPS, or the yield monitoring uh, system, and also those uh, sen different sensors and the variable rate application machines to put the fertilizer or the, herbis, uh, the pesticide at the right, the right input, at the right amount, and at the right time and at the right place. So it, it, this is the future, but to do that, I mean, it, it's completely different than the, the conventional way. We spread everything uh, uniformly. So in the precision agriculture, we require them. I mean, you do that by the crop needs. Uh, 
my, exp my previous experience is on the petty rice. I work a lot on petty rice. So I, first I will show you some examples we did in the petty rice. Uh, in uh, this is uh, in the beginning stage. It's, uh, we started about this size. This size is about 100 hectares only. Um, but uh, when you have, uh, we use remote sensing to get the yield maps for each crop season. Then we combine several crop seasons. Then we get this, uh, we call it the spatial temporal yield trend maps. Uh, it's very important you just not using one crop season because they may probably be affected by the weather, by the human operation, or by the plant, um, by the disease, or many things. But if you combine several crop seasons, then you remove all those things. Then only the, the only, diff, I mean, but when you combine this, you can see that here, this is, if it is in the uh, blue color, that means it's always high compared to other plots in this, in this particular area. If it is in the red color, that means its yield is always low. So when you remove those uh, effects from the weather, from the human, from the many things, then the, the only thing left is soils. So we use this kind of things, then uh, we can identify. We, we just go to the field, then we look at those uh, soils on, in the blue color and also in the red color, then we compare their characteristics. Then we can find out what's the basic reasoning for the, causing the, this low yield. In this particular site, we find that the leaching loss is the main cause for this. Then we expand our experience to a much larger area. This is about 12 kilometers by 12 kilometers. So it's a much larger area. Then um, <clears throat> there's many causes that can cause the low yielding, and uh, we can easily identify that. And also you can um, identify where those, I mean, the different mechanisms occurred in which places, then uh, you can do the site-specific management on that. So. We, with the success of the, we had in the paddy rice, so at that time I was thinking probably we can go to the, pet, uh, the tea plantations because uh, in the, the wisdom, during the wisdom tea platform period, because I, I was a person uh, assist our president to run that project, and at that time we know a lot of those tea farmers, then um, we recognize some of the problems they are facing. So in last year we have a uh, Council of Agriculture project, and then uh, we try to identify those, um, the, the, what are the possible mechanisms causing low yield on that. In the beginning, we thought, well, we, we just apply the, what we have in the paddy rice and uh, we, to see what, ca what happens. But the, the thing, oh, before do, we do that, then well, I'll briefly say that uh, this is in Taiwan, and those in uh, darker green area, that's the major tea producing areas. But about two thirds of the tea, is producing in the center of Taiwan. And uh, our university is located here. So it's close to all those major tea producing areas and uh, those are the four major <coughs> tea pro producing areas we, we are focusing on. And um, we, we, during the study last year, we, we used spot satellite, it's a satellite and it has a spatial resolution about six meters by six meters. Okay, so when we apply that, we, here, we, we, we collected the images starting from 2017, uh, 2013 up to now. And we have many of those um, satellite images. Then uh, we identify those uh, tea gardens. Then uh, we say, when combining those multiple images, we should be able to get the trend maps. Then we should do the same thing, find out the low yielding mechanism and uh, try to delineate some field management system. But the, the problem is um, in Taiwan, the, those tea gardens is quite uh, fragmented. Usually the, each, each, tea, uh, each tea plantation is uh, only about several acres large. So it, and all surround, sometimes surrounded by other uh, crops or by forests and things. So it's, it's quite fragmented. And the other thing is uh, tea is uh, perennial crops, so it can grow much longer. You, uh, the, the variety we grow in Taiwan mostly would probably, uh, you can up, uh, um, last till for 30 years before you need to replant it. And the other, the, the, the worst thing about this is um, because 
those uh, tea plantations are owned by each farmers, and each farmers they have their own ideas how to manage the farms. So, so the managing practice varied a lot. So then, um, so it, it's it's not not different, uh, quite different than the paddy rice because in paddy rice they probably transplant it at about the same time and they use about the same uh, fertilization things, and so you can easily identify that. But for the for the tea plantation, it's it's quite difficult. So in this case, then uh, we add one more thing here. We do a field inspection first. So we, based on the, the satellite images, then we still identify those things, that, but we go to the field with those simple instruments. We have a probe. It can go to a, about a meter deep. And we also use this, <coughs> this, uh, this is a kind of a stick. It's, it's easier. It, we, we, it should be a penetrometer, but uh, at penetrometer, you have uh, meters there, but it, it's difficult to use. But we use this simple one. That if we just test the, how, the, how effective the, the depth of the effective soil zone and uh, the compactness of the soil. And we also have um, pH meter and the EC meters. So those uh, simple things allow us to see a lot of things. Say, for example, if you look at the when you use this soil prop, then you look at the soil color, particularly the modeling. That will show you the, the, how the internal drainage will be. And if when you feel the textures, um, then uh, you know a lot about the soils. So we use those things, then uh, <clears throat> try to identify some possible mechanisms. Uh, in the following, I will show you several examples. For example, this one. <clears throat> this is a uh, tea plantation. It's surrounded by forest. It's on the slope. And uh, this is the spatial temporal map. You can see it also in this, in this particular one, you, s you s see it s a little bit different. But the uh, nice thing about using these uh, images, then uh, you can have um, different times images. This is, um, it's just like when you go to the hospital to see a doctor. As adults, we can explain what's wrong with, about me. Then uh, the doctor probably will do a diagnosis. But for the, when the doctor see an infant, the infant can tell. So the doctor has to look at the infant to see some symptoms. So we do the same thing here. So the, the, using the satellite images, then uh, we can see the history of the, the, the whole plant gardens. So we can see more than this, uh, the spatial temporal, uh, spatial temporal, temporal um, variation map. Say, for example, here, <coughs> you can see those uh, red colors. Red colors means uh, it grows very bad. Uh, but it only occurs in the winter times. So when you look at this, then, uh, but it's, it's quite good in the summer or in the most of the times. Uh, so it, then uh, when you look at this, you will see that in the winter time, in, in this part of the area, in Taiwan, this is uh, like a dry season. So we, we just think uh, to us, that's probably you have um, those uh, drought things uh, effect here. So then uh, you, when you see this, then you can actually go to the field and do a testing. And you will see, you, when you compare those, this size and this size over here, then you will see the, the depth that soil is different. So that makes us, um, we, do a, we have some speculation that probably the soil is shallow and uh, you have drought experience, uh, experience the drought stresses. And here is the map, uh, a picture showing this site. This is the, in the slope, you can see that. And this part is the one you show that's in the red area, and this is the other area. And the, here you can see the, the height difference. There's about, uh, it, it's hard to see from the picture, but when you go to the field, it's actually about 30 centimeters difference. Those, in this, in this um, good area, then the, all those new shoots coming up. But in here, it's just stay there and uh, doesn't grow. So actually, so you will appear on that. And you can see here, for, when they have here, then many um, diseases have uh, appeared in here. To a plant pathology, then they will say, well, we identify this, then we just spread the pesticides. But to us, uh, if you don't solve the soil problem, then every year you will have this problem. So to solve this problems um, um, forever, then uh, it would be better somehow to find out the mechanism to, I mean, try to remove the, the mechanism causing the, the low yield here. Then uh, you don't need to worry about those um, the disease problems. Here's another example. 
This is also a, a, a key current that's surrounded by the forestry. And in this one, then uh, you will see that <coughs> the, the red color or the, 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 the worst thing is uh, doesn't perform well, always appear this at about the same area. So that would be like um, uh, when you look at this side, it's, uh, it's very, have a very good internal drainage. But those, those places, they are located at the surface drainage pathways. So that looks, uh, seems to us then, uh, because a lot of those waters flowing through those places, that means uh, you probably have a severe nutrient leaching, and also during those uh, water infiltration, then you probably have some poor aeration problem, and then um, the, the, the plants doesn't grow well. And here is the picture showing that. And here is the place where you have uh, poor performance, and here is the, you have good performance. And this is the, the passage where the water flows through. So you have here, then uh, you have leaching problems. So, so it's, you can identify that. And here's another example. <clears throat> oh, before I do that, uh, you can see that most of the colors that will be in probably in this range, from the light blue to light green, mo most, in most cases. But in this particular site, you will see that a lot of those places, they are up to here. Uh, if you understand about remote sensing, then that means um, you, if you see the NDVI, that means you have very high uh, vegetative growth. But this is not the case, because um, in here, if, if the, the tea plantation, they don't have too many of those young leaves, because old leaves, they look like dark green and thick. For the young leaves, they are light green and uh, very thin. And that, that <clears throat> if you only have those um, uh, old leaves, then that will have give you a very high uh, NDVI value. So here in this in this particular tea gardens, then uh, you will find out that some of them is at sometimes this up to the here. The the reason before for this is uh, because this plantation they use a lot of chemical fertilizers, so their soil is, is very acid. They're usually around th uh, three point five. So much, much lower than those optimal temp, uh, pre, uh, pH value. Usually we said four is the minimum we, we, uh, we reach the tea plantation. But some of those tea plantations, when you using those uh, chemical fertilizer at a large amount rate and at a long time, the soil pH is really gets low. And also they, because they use chemicals, and also they herb, uh, spread those herbicides. So you, you can feel the compaction in, the, in the, this uh, particular plantations, and here is the size you look at. You, they, ha they have those spots of the wilted branches all over the plantations, and uh, to plant the pathology, they call it the dieback blight, and also you can see some uh, traces of a Taiwan termite, but uh, the, the thing to us is uh, this soil is too acid. Whatever you do, then, uh, I mean, it won't help you it, unless you try to correct the soil pH. Otherwise, then uh, you, you will always experience it like this. Then another case, it's more complicated. Uh, on this particular <coughs> tea plantation, uh, if you look at the NDVI, uh, it will be like this smaller one. Uh, it's appear normal to, to others, but the farmers complain. His, the quality of his tea is not good compared to the others. So when we check this, uh, we, we find out that let me just show you the, the picture. When you go to the corner, that, that looks good. But the, the problem is um, the, the top nut, the, the buds die back. This is uh, probably like a, the picture. Um, oh, Mr. Greenberg is not here. Uh, yesterday, he showed a picture that just looked like this. You have a tip dying, dying back. And also, sometimes uh, for those young leaves, they have um, uh, yellowing problems. That, if it is occurs to a plant nutritionist, that means um, you have a boron deficiency. And the, the reason you have a boron deficiency is um, in this soil, the previous, they, they grow yam. And it, the yam, they use uh, some, um, uh, uh, we call it a lime, to the soil to adjust the pH. So in this particular soil, the calcium is too high. The calcium is too high, and that between with the boron, there is antagonism between each. So you, you, they were experiencing the, the, the 
the, those uh, top uh, bird dying back. Then uh, you have, uh, then you, you, you won't collect those new, uh, new birds, but you can only collect those uh, side leaves. Uh, but to the farmers, if you don't have those, uh, the, the, the new birds, then the, <clears throat> the quality for this uh, uh, tea leaves is not good enough. So, so they, the, the, the farmers complaining about this, uh, the, the, the bad quality about his uh, plantations. So all of this, you can see this, uh, if you have, a, if in California, you have a successful plantation, then those are the things probably UC Davis will face. <laughs> you will get a lot of phone calls to see uh, what's problem, what's my soil's problem, and how, how to improve that. And so in the future, um, you probably <laughs> need to do a lot of research on this. Okay. Then uh, some of the diagnosis system, uh, the logic we use is uh, when, when I go to the field, I usually look at the, if the, the root, because root is the basic, you uh, absorb a lot of water and nutrients from those mediums uh, to supply the growth of the plants. So I would, the first thing when I go to the field, I, I will check to see if this uh, root activity uh, impaired by this poor regime because um, the Tea plants, they, they, like, they like to have water, but they don't like the flood. So there's many cases that you, they can cause poor variation. So we will check those symptoms. If it is okay, then uh, we also check the, if the root expansion is probably is strict by the plow pan or by the compaction. Uh, compaction can be either due to different mechanisms. Uh, if it is still okay, then we will see if it is gross affected by the, if it is affected by the inadequate water supply or the nutrient deficiency on balance or the solar radiation because will, if, particularly when you have tea plantation on the slopes, then that will affect that very seriously and some uh, physio uh, physiological disaster, uh, disorders. Then uh, if not, we will also check to see if it's damaged by some disease, insects uh, or other uh, meteorological disasters to, to see uh, what's happening. So those are the logic when we go to the fields, we, we check that. But, but it's, uh, we also have some, uh, oh, this is the, the, the diagnosis keys. Uh, we keep updating this because uh, whenever we go to the field, when we have the, those uh, new cases established, then we will try to, I mean, update our key. But also we, also uh, did a lot of those uh, nutrient diagnosis. This, this is more common because uh, a lot of plant nutrition, they, they have this um, uh, flow chart. And also the uh, disease and pest uh, diagnosis. The, the reason we have this disease and pest and also the plant nutrition, that's help us to, when we go to the field, then we see the symptoms. Then we can advise, uh, tell the farmers, those are the symptoms that you have. But, for the moment, you have to do some kind of treatment, but the, the, the more basic mechanism underneath to causing those things is because some of your soil problems, and to fix this problem uh, permanently, then you have to somehow to improve your soils. Okay, uh, then uh, with the la uh, last year's experience, then uh, this year we we well, just sent, uh, submitting the proposal to the Ministry of Science and Te Technology in Taiwan. This would be like a three-year project. It was started from uh, uh, June, if approved, it will be started from June this year and uh, till 2021. Uh, th this whole project will in uh, include five sub-projects. Uh, basically, they were based on the whatever the case we already established and the new cases we come out from other projects. Uh, the first project would be like an um, uh, expert diagnosis system to, to help the, the students or the newcomers to identify the problems. When we identify the problem, then we also identify if this is a physical problem or chemical problem or bi biological problems. Then we have three sub-projects. Uh, they are dealing with each of those. And uh, Oh, okay, I have to finish. Okay, okay so uh, then I skip this. Um, for, for, the, for the first project, when, <clears throat> because um, the, the identification key I just mentioned to you, it's, it's sh keep updating. So we should have new uh, expert knowledge coming in. So we try to use this um, 
try to build an expert system to do that. And uh, for the second, it's about physical problems. Uh, as I showed before, that we have some simple uh, instrument help us to do that, but we, we really like to have some more easier, conven uh, convenient um, monitoring sensors help us to identify the porosity or book density. Usually, this has to take back to the lab to do some analysis. And also, we try to in, in this uh, we try to develop some improvement practice, say for about smart irrigation, uh, how to overcome those subsurface compaction problem or the poor internal drainage problems. And for the chemical things, we like to develop some uh, iron selective electrode. So in the fields, we can, <laughs> okay, probably in two minutes, <laughs> we could do that. Then uh, for the improvement part, we try to improve this, uh, the low pH problem, nutrition problem, leaching loss problem. And for the biological problems is uh, we try to de develop some sensors to help us to identify those um, about uh, microbial activities and all the diversity in the field, and we try to have some biofertilizer. That means we have some beneficial microbes in the chemical, add with the chemical uh, fertilizer or the compost. And the most important, we try to make the tea plantation more diverse in their ecosystem. So those microorganisms can help us do free work. I mean, help in to improve the soil conditions. Okay, and uh, for the social, we try to uh, do some um, uh, business model and uh, social impact uh, index. Okay, finally, then uh, our experience showing that a lot of those uh, poor soil management and uh, in appropriate fertilization pr practice actually is the real cost, the, the real reason behind that you have a poor growth. And uh, understanding those is um, very important to have a precision and sustainable uh, management practices. And finally, um, as I mentioned, that uh, we really like to have take this opportunity to, I mean, if you have any ideas about collaborating in the student learning or the research or the extension, that's really welcomed. Okay, with that, uh, thanks for your <laughs> attention. Thank you very much, Professor Shen. Okay. Uh, we have time for one question while we're um, transitioning. Uh, and if there aren't any questions right away, then we can uh, hold those for the, dis we'll also have a Q&A after all of, the, all of the discussion, but this is terrific. I can see we have one right now. Okay. So, Professor Shen. You know, from your presentation, it seemed like, you know, uh, chemicals was a, was a problem uh, in many cases. Uh, Usually, too many, too much chemical, uh, and uh, impacting the soil. Um, how much of your effort is um, uh, is looking at uh, organic practices to fix this problem? Um, if the organic farming, they also use a lot of those organic fertilizers. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so they they are also causing problems. Yeah. Yeah, so the organic, I mean, using organic farming is not the solution to solve this over fertilization. In Taiwan, those uh, organic farmers, they put a lot more of those organics in, in the fields. Yeah. <laughs> yeah great. Okay. great, great question and great follow up. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you again. We'll continue with the question and answer.